I'm Don Reed, uh, owner of Saltwater Fly Tires. Um, today uh, we're going to continue tying articulated flies. Uh, I'm really become enamored with these articulated flies. I've been tying them for about three years now. I uh, use them both freshwater and saltwater. Uh, and a lot of the flies will carry over from freshwater to saltwater. Most of the ones that I tie, like the game changer that we were tying the other day, which is a three articulation um, fly using uh, CCT body fur and uh, it has a single trailer stinger uh, so you don't have to worry about short strikes. Um, this one um, is a, uh, takes a, it's a good while, uh, takes a while to tie but it's a good fly it moves real well in the water so but today we're going to tie one a little closer to my heart it's using natural materials like finished raccoon which is a uh, very mobile very durable, I, I describe it as the best um, fly tying fur and, uh, we've ever found. Uh, it comes in a full array of colors. Uh, we at Saltwater Fly Tires have, I think, 16 colors of it now. Um, it's available in three different sizes, some for bonefish, some for uh, long fur like this. This is actually intermediate uh, length fur, but it's going to do real well for the fly that we're going to tie today. We're going to tie a white fly, all right? It's articulated in the tail. It's only a single articulation. Features a single trailer hook, single uh, trailer hook um, that is um, attached to the forward shank using 80 pound um, uh, braid, uh, which is really intensely strong. Um, this fly, you could, uh, you could take this to Canada, uh, fish the Elk River, and just slay the, the bull trout. This would just be something they would jump all over. Or you can take it to South Florida and nail snook with it all day long. It's, and it's a very durable fly. You could fish the same fly all day long with snook or bull trout for that matter and it would still hold up. So it's a very durable fly and I'll show you how to tie it from this point on. So I'm just going to lay that down there. We're going to start off by making the trailer which is the easiest way of course to do this but at any rate um, it's a little different from the um, from the game changer although you could use the uh, the fish gulls articulated shanks for this fly as well but what I normally use is um, today I'm using a SC 17 2 aught gamakatsu hook which has about a 15 degree kick on a, on a nice strong hook which will hold up for pretty much anything that you want to set it into. And I'm using a stainless steel um, Mustad um, 34011 uh, hook shank. It's an old one aught or two aught. I like the two aughts better because the shanks are a little longer. But it's an old stainless steel hook. I don't use them to fish with anymore, but I sure use them to build other flies. So I'll show you how to use this and to our advantage um, and give it new life. But at any rate, so you start off with the SC-17 uh, Gamakatsu tarpon hook. Um, I'm going to use white thread since this is a white fly. And I tend to uh, cover the shank. I always like to wrap the shank. Uh, it, uh, it, gives it, it gives the fly a little more tooth, a little more durability. It gives the, um, the material something to set to. At any rate, it's hard to set directly to the metal. Um, and if you notice, I'm, I am using the thread to guide the wraps on down the shank of the hook to make each wrap line up with the last one. So it's real fast to tie it that way. And so we're going to trim that off, wrap it back a little bit. And we're going to put one good course of um, finished raccoon on this as a base. So you just take it. Don't ever trim the under fur out. Leave the, the leave the under fur in. It's it gives the uh, the pattern uh, a very fish fishy shape, uh, and it moves like nothing I've ever seen before in the water. So get a clump. It's sparse is better. This is that's a, a medium heavy uh, clump. Um, square the butts. And then you're going to kind of spin them around this hook shank. Right? What, and the way that I do that 
is I throw two loose wraps on this and then just force the fur all the way around the hook shank and make sure that I get it, get the entire hook shank covered. Once you get to that point, then you go ahead and tighten it down. All right, so we got the first coat on, the first course on. I'm gonna use uh, ultraviolet pearl uh, material to um, for flash. It really looks good in the water. I use a different pair of shears for plastic since they tend to dull your, your shears. Um, I don't like square butts, so I usually take them and make an irregular end on both ends. Make sure that I don't have any cockamamie in there. Then I wrap the flash around the hook shank right in the center like this. Pull it down above the area where I want to tie it in. And I set it like this and then let go of it. And you wrap it, you press it into shape so that it goes around the hook shank as well. And it gives you a veil over the fur. All right, so almost through with this part of the deal. All right, we're gonna put one more little course of, of cover over that, um, over the veiling, which is oh, even more sparse than the last one. Don't want to get too heavy with any of your flies. You want to, anytime you're using uh, natural materials, well, any materials for that matter, usually as you first start out, you use more material than you really should. And even in this fly, I'm probably using too much material but it'll demonstrate better this way. So, all right, here again, you wanna force it around the hook shank. You wanna be sure that you get a good covering all the way around the shank. And as long as you have those two wraps on there, it's not going anywhere. It'll loosely spin around. Then you wanna finish this off. Basically just a quick little whip finish and be done with it. You could do a single-handed whip finish, or you can use a whip finisher any way you prefer. All right, so now this, we need to cement it down so that it stays together. I'm using Clear Cure Goo Hydros, uh, which is a new material. It's an acrylic. It never yellows. It uh, will penetrate. It's a very thin viscosity uh, acrylic that will penetrate all the way to the shank, and once it it sets instantly under the light, and you, um, I, I'm beginning to like it a lot better than um, any other cement for finishing the heads off. In this particular case, I want it to set quickly. So don't look into the light, and that should set that, it should be dry at this point. Yep, there you go. All right, so now this part, as I said, we're gonna attach it to the, this is the articulation actually. This is, it'll take about, oh, eight inches, uh, more or less, of the 80 pound braid. This, I'm, you can use anything from something as sophisticated as cigars, Kanzi, Kanzen, um, or you know, just any good braid will work. You want to double this, double it so that the ends actually match because that's that'll help you when you put your beads on. All right, form a, a loop. Come from underneath, from the point, uh, the point of the uh, hook. And this is maybe a little picky, but I um, I believe that the um, the fly swims better if you're pulling it from this direction. So at any rate, I'm gonna square those tips up so I can get these beads on. Now I use, you can use any kind of beads you want to on this. I use them as spacers, but I use them also to make the fly swim correctly. And you can use anything from tungsten, 
which will really put you down quickly. It depends on your current and the depth that you want to fish at. But so in this particular case, we are going to use tungsten. I've got them laid out here. And I usually use three beads. You can use glass. You can use any. I have a, a buddy who uses pearls in there. Um, I'm a little more economical, but not terribly because tungsten is almost the cost of pearls. Um, feed it on. Feed three beads on is usually good spacing. I use either five thirty seconds or you know these um, three sixteenths. This this will get down quickly. This fly is going to be a little heavy. You can also, I mean, it depends on the current that you're fishing in. As I said earlier, if you're fishing for bull trout in Canada, you want to get it deep, quick, and you're usually in a, in a stiff current. So this fly will get down really quickly, and you might even want to wrap some lead on the, on the next shank. All right, so you lay that aside, and we're ready to go on that. So the main part of the fly is built on this 3411 stainless steel. Don't try cutting carbon steel. It'll, it'll really dull your tools. Uh, but stainless steel is easy to cut through. I'll show you what I'm talking about cutting at the end of this deal. But at any rate, uh, set it up in the vise. I like a wrap shank, as I said before, so we're going to wrap the shank. Chasing it down with a pulling the thread in your left hand back. It'll keep the wraps lined up. Every once in a while you want to make this flat wax lay down. And that's what we're using today is Danville's flat axe, uh, I'm sorry, flat waxed A thread, which is it's just an old go-to for me. I use it on all my saltwater flies. It just does a really good job, lays flat if you want it to lay flat. You can split it if you need to make a, um, if you want to make a brush or something like that. But at any rate, wrap it all the way down the shank. Trim off the tag end and wrap wrap onto the bend. All right. And I come back up to where I'm going to put the the eye in. And in this, like I say, I want this thing to swim with the hook point up. The way to control that is by controlling the weight on the hook, the forward hook, or the forward shank. So I'm going to put the, the um, these brass eyes underneath the hook shank. Now you could just actually this is the the best way to go at it. It, it comes out to where all of the weights on the bottom of the fly, and it'll swim better. All right. So you figure eight that in. It's a simple figure eight to the tight, um, your usual way of putting on a, a pair of um, barbell or hourglass eyes. And then come back to just in front of the bend over the point of the hook. You can see that's just maybe a little tight, but at any rate, close enough. Excuse me. And then I like to cement that in. I use a lot of Dave's flex cement. I like that. I, I've been using it for so long that my brain's probably not intact anymore, but my flies stay together. At any rate, I sucked it in, it'll dry up real quick. And then I want that cement on the hook shank because we're about to tie this guy in. All right. You take the trailer and you find the grain of the of the knot that you have so that it'll stay on the upside when you tie it in. Okay, so you lay this down across the hook shank and tie it in on the top of the hook shank. All right, so that the first bead is right at the bend of the hook. You, uh, you want to leave a little slack there, just a little bit, but you want everything on top, okay? You come down following the, the um, braid so that it's laying right on top. You can see I've divided it here against the eyes so that it stays on top and it stays, well at this point it's, it's fixed anyhow. It's not going anywhere. Work all the way up to 
just behind the iron. A lot, most people, like myself you know, included, uh, tend to over anchor this, but hey, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I go under the eyes and cross it like this, come back up on the top. This is really redundant, but I don't think anybody would pull that out, but I would hate for a fly of mine to give up, so I always over time. So you're tying back down the top. You folded this back around the, the hook shank in front of the eyes, and now you're coming back down. So you've got a double wrap of thread over the, over the uh, braid. So it's anchored in really strong. It's not going to come apart. And 80 pounds, if you hook into anything that'll break 80 pound braid on a fly rod, yeah, you weren't going to land it anyhow. So, all right. Uh, trim off the tag end. This, this braid is really tough to get a good cut on. You have to use the sharp part of the scissors way back on the um, on the still useful part of them. Been cutting too much plastic. Okay, so you wrap this in. You can wrap back up and wrap back a couple of times if you just feel insecure. Put a little more cement on it and let that cement set in because the next part doesn't really need the cement as much. And to defend yourself as much as you can from that hook point, I'm going to take it and wrap it back here out of the way with a rubber band. That'll help, but not cure the problem. So it's still there. You have to watch it. I usually snag myself a couple of times during tying a fly. So, all right. At this point, I think I'll put in a little more flash. Flash is a thing that you can you can cut it off, but you can't add it to it on the water. So, if you don't like it, once you get to the water, if it's, it seems to be affecting the, the fish, you can always trim it off but I find it very difficult to add on the water. So I go ahead and put it in. And you can, you can put as much or as little in as you like, but I tend to overkill it and then I can trim it back. I do a lot of modifying when I'm fishing. Um, I'll, get the, I'll take, the, uh, take the fly heavy, well, with a lot of material on it, in other words, um, and then trim it while I'm on the boat. Here again, I'm already hooked to this hook. I have got to get it out of my knuckle. And so I'm going to let go of this and let go of them there all at the same time. Here again, if you set it in a couple of, you know, a few millimeters before where you really want it tied down, then you'll be able to spread it around the hook shank and get a good even spread on this thing. Unless you want to, I'll, I'll, if you want it just straight down each side, then you can just tie it in with that on either side and you come up with it uh, down either side. Okay, so here we are, we're ready to add the first coat of fur. All right, cutting another clump. Try to cut, think sparse. And that one is not sparse. So here we go. We're going to square these tips again. Didn't take any of the underfur out. Leave all the underfur in, and the guard hairs will create the body of the fly. So one, two, real, real light. Just something to keep the bobbin in place and keep the thread on top of it so you don't have to hold it. And then you want to work it all the way around the hook shank. And now that I've got cement on this, hook shank, it's much more difficult to force. You might even have to use your thumbnail or something to force it around. But you just want to be sure you get a good wrap all the way around. Okay, that's good and tight. Now, I'll blend all that together, watching the hook point with my handy dandy indicator brush brush that is really should be called the, the brush that nobody can do without. It's the best thing I've ever found for working hair or fibers. Um, it just 
does a phenomenal job. Everybody should have one. They're not expensive. Okay, so we're going to come on up. At this point, I'm going to put a little bit of red in. Both, it seems like bull trout and snook like a little red. I think it may look like the, the uh, bait is injured or something, but whatever. I like red. This is blood red. Um, Black flex that we sell here. We sell a couple of different uh, varieties of this, but it's basically spandex. It's not rubber. It'll last a lot longer than rubber will. And it's, it's neat, neat material. It's oval. All right, so here again, have it. Go up on top, wrap it in, just so you got it where you want it, and then sort of mush it around to where you want it to spread. And in this particular case, I want it to go all the way around. And there you go. And set it in good and tight. Normally I'd put a spot of glue on that, but I think I want to defer at this point. All right. Now, one more little wrap of, of the fur. I use, I use a real sharp fur scissor. These are serrated. Uh, I keep those aside for fur. Uh, I'm real particular about my scissors. This is just a good inexpensive uh, pair of hair scissors. Uh, you can pay a lot of money for them. Uh, and I believe me, I have enough of them around. That I paid $80, $90 for a pair of scissors, especially small trimmers. Okay, so still have the clump. All right, I want to put the thread just in front of where I tied in this this uh, flash or this trim. One, two, and then all the way around the hook shank. Again, forcing it all the way around. Sometimes it wants to be stubborn, like right now. Just keep pushing it. Use your thumbnail. and then finish it off once you get it there, tie it in. All right, now the rest of this fly in here, I'm going to brush it out again just so everything's lined up now the way and looks good. Okay, we're going to finish this thing off using Enrico Puglisi. Uh, this is a uh, white streamer brush. I like the brush material a lot because it goes really fast and you can wrap it around the eyes. You can go um, it, it goes on really quickly. Um, some people uh, complain that it, this six thousandths of stainless steel wire adds weight to the fly, but in this particular case, that's not a bad thing. And I use it on flies that I want to hang in the column, so I don't really hold to that theory that it adds that much weight to the fly. It, it at least distributes the weight evenly. I usually cut the tag end off of it because I don't like that extra wire laying out there to cut my my thread. Watch the hook. Just got me again. Okay, wrap that in real good and tight. You want a good four or five millimeters of that wrapped in, and then wrap out to your to to the point where you're going to finish. Okay. So using your your Everybody should have one brush. Comb this stuff back. Pull it back. Make a wrap. Try to keep it from over wrapping the stuff. And you do that just simply by keeping it pulled back away from the core. Depending on how tight or how dense you want this thing is how tight you wrap it. And in this particular case, I want it sparse, so I'm going to make the wraps wider make them farther apart. Even when you're real careful with this pulling it back with your fingers, it's, it doesn't work exactly like a feather does. Um, 
So you have to kind of, this brush really makes the difference. Okay, so I'm almost up behind the eye. Get a good tight wrap around right behind the eye. Then over. Try to keep everything going in the right direction, going back. You go back over the top, comb it out. And otherwise, you'll wind up over wrapping up the eye. The eye. This cross over the eye is the worst part. All right, now you'll want to wrap close in front of the eye so that you cover the eyes again. And pull back, comb out, pull back, comb out. Fly really goes together fast if you once you get used to it, the process. The eyes I'm using are these deep sea eyes. They're uh, they're brass with inlaid uh, domed um, adhesive eyes, and then I coat them over with a, a light coat of this clear cure goo, and it keeps them in place. And in my opinion, it works better than than uh, anything else I've tried. So, and I've used anything from epoxy on. Let's see if I can pick that out where I can get a to run the thread. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. Stop. Get your your cutters. These are uh, miniature uh, train rail cutters. Believe it or not, um, they're they're very inexpensive, and they'll cut anything up to carbon steel. They won't cut carbon steel, but they sure will cut stainless. So, any rate. Now that you have that done, you want to try to be sure that you don't have a snag there. To cut your thread, Just mash it out. All right, and then build a head. Okay, and here I'll use the whip finisher again. I seldom use this, but demonstration is always good to learn to use this thing. So this pretty much does it. There's one thing left after we seal the head off. I'm going to brush it out real good first. Watch that hook. So far I haven't bled on this fly, but I usually do. All right. Finish this guy using the clear cure goo head. Flash, don't look at the light. Watch the rubber band. Okay, now I'm going to take this whole thing out of the vise. The last step if you can get a pair of compound cutters like this or wire dikes, whatever you can get works fine. Stainless steel cuts pretty easily. So we're going down to the bend of the hook. Careful not to cut where we've tied in our bead. And trim off that hook shank. Because all you need is that trailer. No more short strikes. Okay. And there you have it. Just a real easy articulated fly tie moves in the water like nobody's business I mean you'll really love the way that this moves in the water and depending on the weight of the, the beads that you use the if you wrap lead on or you use brass eyes or you use lead eyes or you use any other type of eyes controls your sink rate and how it swims as well so those are the little nuances that um, sometimes get overlooked but um, in this particular case this is a medium weight fly I make them much heavier and I make them much lighter. But anyway, give it a try. Uh, if you need the materials, let me know. I'll fix you right up with the kit.